Hello and welcome to the fifth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering nesting in C Sharp and programming some level boundaries. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you can also find all the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things, and you can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So last time, if you remember, we had our player able to move side to side, but we don't want this player to go outside of bounds. So what we need to do is set some boundaries within the script that we wrote last time. So we need to have a limit on the right side and a limit on the left side. So how do we do that exactly? Well, firstly, we need to establish just how far we want our player to be able to travel left and right. So in order to do that, let's select our player. Uh, let's zero out the position on the X. So he's dead center of where we want to go. And we need to establish just how far we want him to come this way or this way. So let's have a look. Let's zoom in a little bit and have a look there. So I think we want him to come somewhere about here because we want to leave a little edge at either side just in case we have some you know, assets either side to make it look really nice or whatever. And we don't want him to run into those. So let's hold control and drag our X somewhere over here. So if we say maybe five, so I'm thinking five on this side, five on the other side. So there's his limit on the right and negative five would be his limit on the left. And I think that should do just fine. So let's remember those numbers, five and negative five. And let's set the player back to zero, dead center. So let's go into the script that we started writing and we can modify this script once again. We can just keep advancing it until we've got it exactly how we want. As I said before, if you write a script, it doesn't have to stay that way. You can build the script and just keep building on it and building on it and building it. This script could end up quite large, but we'll also make sure that it is fully legible and we do understand what's going on at all times. Because a very large script can become messy, but we'll make sure that does not happen. So firstly, let's define two more variables. And we are going to have them as floats again, just in case you want them to be... Uh, decimals. And in fact, now I think about it, let's actually have them as decimal, uh, deci decibels, not decibels, decimals, because it will give me an opportunity to show you how to define a decimal number. So let's have this as public, a float, and we'll have it as right limit, and we will have it equal to 5.5. .5. But instead of putting a semicolon here, we have to put the letter F. Now, when you create a decimal number in C sharp, you have to put the letter F so it understands that it is a float. It doesn't do too much in terms of what the number is. So, when we see this variable in our inspector panel, it won't say 5.5F, it'll just say 5.5. .5. You just need to put the F to define it as the float. So, then you put the semicolon. Next, we need to define the left limit. So, we'll do the same. We'll also have that as 5.5. .5. So public float left limit equals 5.5 F with a semicolon. So now we've defined our limits. How do we make it so as the limit is never exceeded within the script? Well, this is where nesting comes in. What do I mean by nesting? It means essentially putting an if inside an if. That's the simplest way it can be described. So what do we mean by putting an if inside an if? Well, we want to make sure that if we are pressing A or left arrow, we're traveling left, we don't want to go any further than the left limit, which is 5.5F. So we can then put after that open curly bracket, but before the transform line, we just need to put in here that other if statement. And we need to say if and in brackets, and what we need, well, realistically, we just need to say, is our player beyond the left limit? And if they are, don't do anything, basically. So we need to say this dot game object, which obviously is going to be us, 
dot transform dot position dot x. So what we're saying here is, is the position of this current player that this script is attached to on the x-axis, is it greater than left limit, close bracket and open curly bracket. Now, before we press return, delete that close curly bracket because that won't go in the correct position. What we need to do is go to this close curly bracket, hit return, and then put our close curly bracket. And what that will do is it will amend the indentations of the code so the flow looks more normal. So let's quickly go over what this is now doing. So it's always moving us forward and it's checking if we're pressing A, then also check are we in the correct position or are we going to go over that left limit? And if we're not going to go over the left limit, then we move our player to the left. Now we do the exact same if we're moving right. And the difference here is that we just have to use the less than. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So remember, after that open curly bracket, we need to say if this dot game object dot transform dot position dot x is less than right limit close bracket open curly bracket and remember delete that close curly bracket because it would not put it in the correct position go to the next close curly bracket and then put your close curly bracket and the indentations will work just fine now obviously we could change the right and left limit depending on what's going on but essentially we're just going to keep it as 5.5 .5 and um, negative 5.5. .5. Good job we looked over that because they were set both the same. So just to kind of reiterate, the right limit should be a positive, the left limit should be a negative. So what's happening? Well, move forward if we press A or left. Are we beyond the limit? No, move to the left. If we're pressing D or right, are we beyond the limit? No. Then let's move right. So if we save this script now and we head back into Unity, let it compile. And on our player, on the inspect panel, if we scroll down to our script component when it finally thought about compiling, it's taking its time, isn't it? Sometime today. Goodness me. Beauty of unity, eh? So anyway, while that's doing that, I'll just explain. So at the bottom, we should see our two new variables that we have created. Obviously, like I say, without that F, because the F is not part of the number. You can see, right limit, left limit right there. We've still got a horizontal speed and player speed. So if we press play now, we should be able to move forward, no problem. And we should be able to move left and right, no problem until we hit the boundary where we cannot go any further. So let's try that. There we go. We cannot go any further. And we'll go to the right. And we cannot go any further. Excellent. That is exactly what we want. And you can see the position on the X is pretty much always going to be a float. And your position will veer just ever so slightly over every now and again. That's not a problem because at the end of the day, what we're doing is we are creating a game which will allow us to change many different aspects, many different variables within the game itself. So having an absolute boundary is not 100% necessary. We don't need to worry about it too much. So this script that we have written, uh, I will leave a link to it in the pinned comment and in the description if you're having any trouble with it. Uh, so if you want to head over to there, download it, it's not a problem. You, you might need it to help you out a little bit. So next tutorial, what are we going to cover? Well, I think we need to start making this look a little bit more like a game. So we are going to import our actual character and get some animations so as our character looks like they are indeed actually running through the level. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell and you can stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I will see you next time.